Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Superman. This is the Red Sun version of Superman. You can tell by the color scheme and the logo, but it doesn't say it on the front. That's something that bugs me with this line, just like a little nitpick, because this doesn't really matter at all because it's on the packaging, but why can't we get the names, like... It's there. Why can't we get it on the front? People that keep things in the package want that kind of thing. They don't want every Superman just to say Superman. They want it to say what it is, I'm guessing. Seems weird. Anyway, back to the figure. It's a lot of reused parts. Some new parts. Is it good? In some ways. Is it bad? In some ways. There's plenty to talk about. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands 18 and a half centimeters roughly, which makes him pretty close to seven and a quarter inches, not counting a little bit of hair height. And right before we get into anything else, we're going to do a quick question of the day. Which version of Superman is your favorite? It can be any version, not figure-wise, just character design-wise. Which version is your favorite? I am partial to the classic Superman with the long hair. Say what you will about me because of that, but I do like that look. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this. First thing I notice on this guy is... I know technically he doesn't have to have the black in the back of his logo. There are a couple versions with the black um, or without the black, but it really needs it, especially if you're going to go with the black trunks, black belt, and black wrist things. I believe you should have the black logo, which is also what the artist who colored this believed, and that came with the figure. So I do wish that was on there. It would make the figure look so much better. Uh, otherwise, it's very lacking in paint and detail. There's not much going on here. It's just gray-blue plastic which is okay enough. Some of the sculpt is all right. He, he has the same arms that we saw before that aren't good. Bad elbows, bad sculpt. His upper body is sculpted pretty well. His abdominal section is kind of doughy looking, but it's not bad. He has a very underdeveloped legs. It looks like a figure. Okay, so there's two things playing into this. I'm just gonna stand him right here so that my hands don't impede your view. And I'm gonna do this as I talk about this. This figure has really weird proportions, and if I know there's one person on the planet that understands how to make things look cool, it's Todd McFarlane. And I'm guessing he doesn't, well maybe he does, I don't know. But I was gonna say I'm guessing he doesn't oversee every single figure that gets released, but he seems like the kind of guy who would do that, and that's a good thing. But this guy is not cool looking. His upper body is super developed. He's very thick and chunky, and then his legs are very thin. He looks like, a, he's got dad bod from the waist down, basically. And another thing that's playing into this problem, this look of a really underdeveloped lower body, lower half, is his head's really big. For a superhero, for a comic book character, you don't want heads to be that big. Now on good guys, you generally have bigger heads than bad guys because smaller head means bigger body in proportion and it makes them seem dumber and more menacing and that's how bad guys are typically drawn. Think Venom, Rhino, I don't know, things like that. Mostly going to Marvel because I'm not into DC as much. Still. This guy's a very big head and a big upper body, which you might be able to get away with with big enough legs, but he doesn't have the legs. Now, I'm not saying they're too short, but they're too spindly, and that throws off the entire look, proportionally speaking. So that is my biggest gripe for this figure. There are definitely proportion issues. I'm guessing you guys might have noticed it, but didn't know exactly what was causing it. That's what it is. The legs don't fit the character. Now, if you go like this and make his legs look bigger, it looks a lot better. But unfortunately, that's not the case. He's going to be like this, and it does look that way. So that is a bummer. Now, the specific paint on the head is pretty clean. He has very narrow eyes and kind of a weird sculpt. And this, yeah, it's definitely a weird sculpt. His nose is very crooked. Look at where his nose is in relation to his eyebrows. The whole face is like kind of twisted and shifted and weird looking. But the paint details themselves are very nice. We have some shading on the skin, paint for the hair, I love that. Eyebrows, eyes, mouth, it all looks clean, but the sculpt is super weird. And maybe this eye is a little in for the paint job, the tampography. I don't know, but it, the paints are clean enough. The paint on here is really clean. I like the sculpt of the cape, that's pretty good. It's not symmetrical, but it's balanced, so that's exactly what you want to see. It doesn't look terrible, but those proportions definitely would make it look a whole lot better. Like a whole, whole, whole lot better. Last thing I want to talk about for the aesthetics is something that I didn't notice before, other than he has baby fat hands again. His hands have these weird notches cut into them to make them more poseable. That isn't a good idea. That looks really weird, especially hands like this. Like, does he need his open, loose, non-using hand to be able to go up and down? You couldn't really see that to go up and down like this. I don't I don't think so, but the hands are cut out like that. 
they do some really strange things at this company with articulation. It's very strange. Anyway, uh, aesthetically speaking, this guy gets a 7. There are parts of him that look good. The overall composition of the top half, not counting the head, that looks not too bad. And you can get away with a head this size. It's more so really tall. I don't know, it's just it's kind of big. I would shrink it just a tiny bit. You could get away with that with big enough muscles, which is generally how superheroes are drawn, but he doesn't have the body to support that. So that's enough of that. 7 out of 10 for the aesthetic. As for accessories, we do get the two loose hands, and we get a fist hand and a gripping hand. So um, it's actually a trigger figure hand, I should point out, and nothing to hit for him to grip. The loose hands are okay, but they both have the cutouts in them, and the fist hand also has the weird cutouts. Ooh. Whatever. Okay, we also get a clear display stand for like a light flight pose. That's okay, that's better than nothing, I like that. And we get a trading card slash collector card of a Superman with a logo painted, and it looks better than the figure. Five out of 10 for accessories. Why do we have trigger finger hands and gripping hands for no apparent reason? Makes no sense. Now it doesn't hurt to have a spare gripping hand, what the heck, but still. At least he got fist hands. No, wait a minute, we only have one fist hand again. Okay. Whatever. Okay, on to the articulation. The head is on a double ball peg and it poses around really well. I think the problem with this guy's head is that the jaw is humongous and there's really no shape to the head. It's very square and tall and giant jaw and tiny eyes. It's just weird. Like the eyes aren't too tiny, but they're too narrow. But yeah, double ball peg moves around nicely. That's fine. Shoulders are on a ball peg. It's virtually useless again. It affords virtually nothing and I don't know why they keep spending the money on that. You can raise the arms up horizontal, full rotation, that's fine. Bicep swivel is fine-ish. If you rotate it though, you get that weird lump because they left part of the bicep on the shoulder. Do you see that? That's actually sculpted on there. It's like whoever sculpted this sculpted it all as one piece digitally and then went in and cut them out, which is fine. That's generally how you do that. But when they cut it out, they left part of the bicep on the forearm or on, on the shoulder. So you get this weird tumor going on, which is like, why don't don't do that? Just make it round. It's an action figure. You can you can change things like that. That looks super duper weird. Very strange. Single jointed elbow, just about 90 degrees. You end up with the joint showing. I guess that's fine. If you leave the arm straight, it looks better, I guess. You already saw the ball hinge wrists. Obviously, they're going to work well, especially with those cutouts that didn't need to be there. So that's that. Torso, let's see if it leans forward. <laughs> nope, can't really lean forward. Can it lean back? It leans back a little bit, not a ton. Side to side is acceptable. Basically all your articulation is gonna be out of the lower ball peg, which gets decent enough range, but even then it's very minimal. I don't know why. Why won't they figure it out? Fix it, fix your articulation. There's no range anywhere. You just get your twist basically and like a little bit of wobble and it's not very tight. I mean, it's not loose, but... Ugh, 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 okay. Going on to the hips. They're fairly loose, again, because it's that same design with the loose little clamp that holds onto the two little pegs, and then these little tabs are what's your resistance. There's just no pressure. No pressure on those, so very, very loose. But you do get to do the splits. Can you bring the legs forward? Nope, not really, that's it. Can you bring them back? Nope, cannot. Thigh swivel, non-existent. Double jointed knee works well enough, but it's one of the ugliest joints ever. Why did they have to include part of the quad in the knee joint? It's so weird. It's like they're just making the sculpt and cutting it up and not accounting for articulation or anything. It's super weird. Pun intended. All right, and then for the ankles, we have these giant ball hinges, which are way too big for the ankle. But of course, because they're too big, you get good range. So that's fine. Toe hinge is the way you're supposed to do a toe hinge. So they can do it. They just don't do it on all the figures. It's still a mishmash of bad engineering, bad design, and bad execution for the articulation. Most of it doesn't work well. Some of it works okay. Five out of 10 for the articulation. This is not the kind of articulation we should be seeing out of any modern company that is boasting articulation for their figures. It just doesn't work. It doesn't look good and it doesn't work. So that's a bummer. Okay, final verdict on this guy. It's not a great release. If you really wanted a Red Sun Superman that you're not gonna look too close at or care about any of the things I mentioned, which that's totally fine, that's totally your prerogative, I'm just here to give you the information, then you're gonna enjoy this figure. It does look mostly like a Red Sun Superman. Um, 
I don't think the head's a good likeness for Red Sun Superman, but that's just my personal opinion. There's plenty of different versions of the character drawn. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a final verdict of six out of 10. It's really disappointing for a figure with virtually no paint, very simple sculpt work, and some, at least some, a good portion of reused parts. It doesn't do enough things good to be a happy purchase. You're gonna buy it and you might be okay with it, but you're really not going to enjoy it all that much if I had to guess. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.